I was that girl who saw the movie Flashdance. Do you remember Flashdance? Many years ago. I saw that movie and I am not lying. The next day I went out and I got a big old perm. I cut my sweatshirts, leg warmers with every outfit and I was around the house like doing the whole. So I, I started taking dance classes five, six, seven hours a day. And uh, within about six months to a year, I started auditioning to, uh, for dance jobs. And my very first job that I got, I was 16 years old. Thank you. 16 when I booked my first job, and that was Debbie Gibson, Shake Your Love. And you can see me with the 80s, big perm. The, you know, the ripped up jeans, the whole eight, the shoulder pads. Gotta love the 80s. So I went on and I did lots of music videos and then one day I got a call to go meet Prince. When he was still Prince, then he was the artist formerly known as Prince, now he's back to Prince, but at that time he was just Prince. So they called me to go on an audition for him and they were looking for a set of identical twins and they couldn't find any and there happened to be another girl who looked like me and they hired us for these videos. The next logical thing was to go into acting, so I started doing uh, commercials. See, Nations Bank gives you tons of ways to do your banking. You can actually get a loan over the phone. Hello. Introducing the incredible new GE Profile Washer. Buon toast, vorrei una fetta de valigie. Ciao. And I did a lot of different TV shows, and then I got hired for Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Well, look who's here. Miss Calendar. Mr. Giles. Well, uh, uh, um... Morning, kids. Morning, England. Buffy, are you supposed to be somewhere? No, I have a free. Cool. But three months into getting the show, I became a Christian. So... It's very interesting how God works, isn't it? When I finally became a Christian, I was still looking for God even though I was in the new age because even though I believed in God, it wasn't impacting my life. I was doing all this stuff and reading all these books, but I was still addicted and tormented and uncomfortable and, and it wasn't affecting me. So when I finally came into Christ, I started to see after the first year or so going to church, reading the word, God became more real. And I started to learn how to think properly. It started to affect me in certain areas of my life. I needed freedom so bad. <laughs> I so needed freedom. That was always my desire when I was in the world before Christ. I was a chain smoker, addicted to cigarettes, addicted to food, addicted to shopping. I mean, I was an overeater, over shopper. Anything you could do over, I was overdoing it. <laughs> and I just remember, you know, going to all my new age classes and being like, oh, I just want to feel that freedom. God, I want freedom so badly. So that when I came into God, I saw, oh my gosh, this is finally the answer. But God started to speak to me, uh-uh, if you really want to grow, because I'm that, and I can tell you guys are these kind of people, I'm like a, I want to grow kind of person. If I'm going to come into God, I'm going to get it all, I'm going to get free, I'm going to get the whole deal. So God said, if, if you're that kind of person where you are, this, then you better just relax because your whole life is going to be processed. You better make a decision, a choice, to learn how to love process. Because I don't want to just be happy 10% of the time when I have a great thing happen or a little revelation. I figure if 90% of my life is going to be processed, I have to make a choice to enjoy it. You know, when we become Christians, it's like we all get this sword. We all get the same exact sword. But he showed me that a lot of us are like these little kids with this huge sword. And we can barely even lift it. We don't even know how to use it. But we all have the sword. But just salvation doesn't equal mastery with the sword. Mastery with the sword is a choice. And that there are tools in the Bible. The Bible is practical. It is full of tools. And that's what, that's what moves me. That's, what, that's kind of my ministry is, is making it, how can you apply it? How can I become a master with the sword? When those feelings started to come up, that's when, that's when the unction, that's when the Holy Spirit would go, you're at the crossroads. Do you want to go medicate or do you want to come to me for the healing? 
That's your choice. You can go and get that instant gratification, that instant comfort, or you can think about what that means to start to come, come to me and let me actually heal you. And this is not natural. There's nothing natural. It's our natural instinct as people when we're in pain to, to get away from the pain, to shut down, to go, you know, it's, it's not natural to want to stay in the pain. But this whole God thing, this whole kingdom that we're in is completely opposite. It's not a natural kingdom. The natural thinking is, a natural man says, you want to get ahead, focus on yourself. God's kingdom, you want to get ahead, focus on everyone else. You know, it's, it's, it's completely upside down. So God was like, let me work with you here. I know this doesn't feel natural, but I want, you need to stay. You need to let yourself be uncomfortable. You're always trying to go meet your own needs really quickly because in the world, that's what you have to do. No one else is meeting your needs. But I'm trying to show you a different system. Stay in where you are. Let me try to meet your need. And he was reminding me that when I, you know, that, that everything of excellence, you have to go against the grain. You have to go against what's natural. Because when I was a professional dancer, let me tell you, there was nothing natural about your leg being up here. <laughs> that is not a natural position. Your leg, you don't just walk around and then your leg just, oh, oh my gosh, what? It just happens to fly. No. It doesn't just gravitate that way by accident. No, especially yours. <laughs> You have to train it. You have to retrain your body over a period of time to get into a new position. One of the girls that I mentor, she told me this the other day because I, I teach them this kind of stuff. And she goes, you know what? I got it. Because I say, you know, when the pain comes up, go to God, stay in it. Try not to retract, try not to run, try to go into it. Like David in the Psalms, he would pour out, he would vent, he would go before God and, and, and express so she said to me, she's a surfer, my girlfriend. She's a really good surfer. And she said, you know, I got the revelation. I was out there surfing. And I didn't know this because I'm not a surfer. When you're surfing big waves, when a wave is coming at you, when you see it coming at you, the way you get over the wave is you have to paddle as hard as you can into the wave because your momentum hits you into the wave and up over it. But the natural, your natural instinct when you see a huge wave coming at you is you want to stop you want to cower, you want to turn, but if you do that, the wave pummels you and you, I mean, you're done. So she goes, you know what? I got it. Because when that wave's coming at, is coming at you, the last thing you want to do is go full force into it, but that's how you get over it. And I said, yes. Yes. The only way to is through. The only way to the other side is through. We kind of want to go around. We want to be transported does not work that way. You got to get into some funky stuff to get to the other side. And you know, unfortunately, I'm just going to say this. I think that's why sometimes we see a lot of what looks like hypocritical Christianity, good hearted people, but a little bit phony because we all believe when we're Christians that we all should just be transformed and blessed. And that's why we're like, I'm blessed. How are you? I'm blessed. Lord, blessed. Praise you. <laughs> blessed. And then we can tell, uh-uh, not sincere, because we all have our truth o meter and we're like, oh my gosh, that's off the charts. I don't know what you're doing, but <laughs> I, I don't buy any of what's happening right there for a second. And that's because, not because they're bad people, but because sometimes process isn't taught. And people aren't taught, you have to go, the only way to the peace, joy, and righteousness that is our promise is you have to go into some past, some funky, some ugly, because healing is not a pretty process. It, it really isn't. Healing is like, kind of like birth. When you're birthing something, it's not, you know, you're sitting in church with your little legs crossed and, you know, it, it, you have to get a little bit radical. It's a little bit violent. It's a little ugly. It's not your prettiest side. But once you get in that, then you come to the other side. Because, you know, I prayed prayers when I first came into the Lord. I was reading the Bible and I was excited about it. And I saw these scriptures like Luke 6 that said, you know, you can be planted on a rock and have that, that foundation so the winds will come and the storm will come and you will not be moved. And I was praying prayers like that. And little did I know, in order for that to happen, all these storms have to come hit you. So, you know, I'm praying things like, God, let me not be moved by circumstances. And then like, you know, I'm on the floor dying. And the Lord is bringing up all these scriptures and reminding me, this is the process. This is the process. This is what I do. It's not just, you know, reading these little scriptures because we have our little Christianese, but then walking this stuff out is a whole different deal. 
And he said, you know, Hebrews 11, where it says, I'm going to shake everything that can be shaken. So what remains cannot be shaken. That's what I'm doing in you right now. Everything in you that can be shaken, I'm shaking. So that when I'm done and you get up, what remains cannot be shaken. So I was in that place where I was on the floor and I literally, I was like, God, what, what, what are you going to do with me? I don't even know who I am. I don't, I, I'm so, uh, I'm just like an empty shell. I had a pile of tissues. I'm just laying out flat. And again, this is how cool God is. When I was young, my favorite show was the bionic woman. I would run in slow motion. I would try to jump in slow-mo. Bye, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'd be outside playing. My mom would call me for dinner. Rabia, I'd be like, my bionic ear is catching that sound. Bye, yeah, 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 yeah. I loved it. I loved the bionic woman. I wanted to be here so bad, Jamie Summers. So I'm laying on the floor dying, thanking God, what? What, what, what can you possibly do? All of a sudden, my spirit, we can rebuild her. We have the technology. So then I'm laughing and crying and having one of those magical God moments. And then I found it in scripture. This is the best part ever. Jeremiah 31, four. I don't remember at what point I actually found this. Again, I will build you and you shall be rebuilt. Everything starts in the Bible. Even the bionic woman was created from the Bible. My, my word of encouragement is just to go for it, to be courageous, to be willing to get in there and deal with what's in there because I promise you, God will not leave you there. The Bible says that he is the author and finisher, that he will complete what he started in you, that he will not leave you there, that if you are just willing to go into that stuff and not run to the counterfeits and not medicate, but actually go to God, that he will heal you for real. Because, and above all things, he can and he will rebuild you. Because he has the technology. My work is done here. That's all I have for you. <laughs>